So when we learned about the derivative at the beginning of calculus, we spent quite a long time learning a wide variety of differentiation rules. Since with partial derivatives, you're just learning how to use those old rules and apply them to multiple variables, um, we're already going to move on to some uses, some applications of the partial derivative. So this segment may not actually get to multivariables, but I need to do a quick little crash course in something called the differential so that we can eventually get to what's called the total differential. So as a reminder, if we had a function, you know, y equals x cubed, we learned that the derivative called dy dx was 3x squared through something called the power rule of derivatives. But we also learned sometime later about the following expression. This was called the differential the differential. It sort of looks like we just multiplied both sides by dx as if this were an actual fraction. You can find lots of discussion about that topic if you want to search around the internet. Just it doesn't take that long to find out all sorts of interesting conversations. But the reality is is that there's a working definition of a differential. You know if y equals some function of x then dy equals the derivative of the function times dx. When you were in Calc 1, you would have seen this, but this isn't one of those topics that typically carries on for long terms, which is kind of sad because it definitely plays a role in a number of other um, subjects. But you also saw this notation when we used integration. But the instructor may or may not have called it the differential form. You just knew that the dx was part of an integral symbol. So we just let it sit there. Or you may have forgotten how the dx got there through a summation. So I'm going to show you a quick little application from the beginning of calculus. And then I can follow it up with what do we gain by applying this to our multiple variable functions. So here's our example. Pretty straightforward. The area of a square. This is a square, or it's supposed to be a square. If each side has length s, we would say that the area of the square is s squared. Now, let's look at a problem, a question, and how you could deal with it without using calculus, and then show you what calculus allows you to do with this simple uh, shape. So let's suppose that we let s equal 4 centimeters. That would be the uh, side of the square. So then we would know um, the area would be 4 times 4, which would be 16 square centimeters. That would be our area. Now let's suppose also that the device measuring the sides of the square has a possible error called delta S and that is 0 0.1 centimeters also known as one millimeter. Now if both sides are off by 0 0.1 centimeters then this area could be actually 4.1 
centimeters squared. If both sides were this much too long, and this number here is 16.81 square centimeters. And we would say that the change from here to here is called the actual change in area is 16.81 minus 16. I left my units off, so let's just put parentheses and call it that. 0 0.81 centimeters squared. So this is the actual change in area and the notation for this change in area is delta A. Okay? Now I can do this with some simple calculating devices. If you need a calculator to multiply this, fine. So, again, a calculus one uh, situation where I haven't actually used any calculus here. So this is what you could do with just uh, uh, arithmetic and some measuring tools. So the concept of a differential says, well wait a second, dA is then the derivative which is 2S times dS. Now we've been given that S is 4 centimeters and then what we say is that this error in the side, the delta S, so to speak, we're going to christen or renamed DS, and that is 0 0.1 centimeters. So I can now calculate DA. DA is 2 multiplied by 4 multiplied by ds 0 0.1 and that is 0 0.8. Now let me tell you what this means. dA is the approximate change in area. Approximations are not exact by definition. Again, the Calc 1 teacher would have shown a number of other cases, maybe even some local linearizations on a curve. But I want you to see that the one thing about approximating is the closer you are, the better it is. And so those of you taking sciences know that error approximation just dominates the write-ups that follow. And they dominate the real world of mathematics more than our algebra formulas will. But I want you to note that dA, which is 0 0.8, is not exactly equal to delta A, which is 0 0.81. But man, are they close to each other. And so it turns out that for what we're going to use it for, this is a much easier calculation most of the time than this one is. Furthermore, sometimes we don't actually know the apparent function that we're working with, but we know all of the rates of change. We know the derivatives. And we know the error measurements of our tools. So time, sometimes we only know this information and we don't know the function from which it comes. So this is your little Calc 1 brush up. In our next exciting episode, we're going to look at a more than one variable case and try to put this to use in a similar fashion. Okay, see you real soon.